Now the World Health Organization says diphtheria is another contagious disease that's spreading quickly in war-torn Yemen. WHO warns that at least one million children are at risk of contracting this disease. Organization reports more than 120 Yemenis have already been diagnosed with diphtheria. Now, so far, 14 patients have lost their lives. The WHO says a Saudi blockade is preventing Yemenis from accessing shipments of diphtheria vaccines and medicines. Meanwhile, a Yemeni doctor has said number of diagnosed cases is alarming. We've seen quite a few cases, more than 10 cases. This disease would have only appeared very rarely before, one or two cases a year. The strange thing is that it seems to be spreading more, more contagious. More than 10 cases is considered quite a few for this disease. Yemen is already dealing with a cholera outbreak that's killed over 2,000 people thus far this year. Earlier this month, Saudi Arabia closed Yemen's air, sea and land borders after Yemeni Ansarullah fighters targeted an international airport near the Saudi capital. And now joining us out of Atlanta for more on the story is Mr. Jim W. Dean, managing editor and columnist at Veterans Today. Hello, Mr. Dean. Thanks for joining us on the program. Sir, now, cholera, almost a million cases, over almost nearly 2,500 dead, most of them children under the age of five years old. And now we have diphtheria possibly shooting up to just as many cases, another million cases there. Widespread hunger and famine, starvation. What's it going to take to get the Saudis to lift this blockade and may perhaps even stop their a deadly daily bombardment of civilian infrastructure in Yemen. Well, uh, it looks at after all this time that it may be uh, required divine intervention to uh, do it. Uh, we're certainly uh, not seeing the UN doing anything. Uh, there's a lot of people uh, that really think that uh, cutting off medical supplies into a war-torn country like this uh, for civilians is a crime against humanity. But you don't see a single Western country, you don't see anyone in the Arab League uh, who's particularly the ones getting money from Saudi Arabia uttering a word uh, about anything about crimes against humanity here. Uh, obviously, what we have going on is the royal family is very bitter about not being able to uh, pound the Yemenis into submission. Of course, they have a hundreds and hundreds of years history of showing that uh, uh, how strong they are at resistance. So you have the typical type of thing you get from an autocratic uh, government, uh, particularly with the royals who think they're, they have some divine right to rule over people. Uh, that, the, that this is a crime against them. So uh, they've in, been inflicting uh, uh, basically general uh, punishment on the whole country uh, to just try to undermine uh, the rebels that if you don't uh, surrender to us, uh, agree to have a puppet government that we pretty much control, uh, we're just going to keep pounding you and pounding you. And as you can see, none of <clears throat> the wonderful Western democracies uh, or anyone is really going to do anything about it. So not only why not? Is this... Why not, Mr. Dean? Why not? I mean, uh, what's what's the big what's the big prize at stake here? Where the UK and Washington, I mean, can justify being complicit in backing Riyadh and what it's doing to the Yemeni people? You mentioned crimes against humanity. In fact, it is a war crime to use food, medicine, water, attack these kinds of uh, you know infrastructure prevent these things from getting to civilian populations. These are all war crimes, and we have the West complicit in backing the re, uh, Saudis and what they're doing in Yemen. So what's the big prize here where it justifies what they're doing? Uh, the surprise is, is uh, really no surprise, is they have this common phrase called, we're pursuing our interest. And of course, they never specifically determine that. Uh, of course, you have the European countries, uh, the big armorers have uh, considered this a cash cow, uh, being able to sell the Saudis uh, munitions, armor, uh, plus all the technical support to do this. And they have, uh, particularly the British, uh, they all have struggling high-tech industries. Uh, they're looking for war business anywhere they can get it. And they figure that if they say no to the Saudis, somebody else will get in there and uh, get the business anyway. Although we do have the British Parliament now, uh, particularly the labor uh, faction, is uh, basically wanting to stop selling arms. And of course, the US, 
uh, is using uh, Saudi Arabia as part of the anti-Iran campaign. Uh, that's their interest, so uh, they don't care about uh, what's happening in Yemen, really. Uh, nobody, no politicians in the U.S. have been jumping off bridges or buildings out of the shame of this country uh, supporting this. So you just have greed, uh, international crime, business multinationals wanting to make more money, politicians wanting big donations for delivering uh, lots of business to them. Uh, it's just a shameful act. And uh, the countries involved, particularly the ones that claim they're spreading freedom and democracy uh, around the world, uh, these, are the, these are what we're re using the term now, fake countries, which uh, people think that's an exaggeration. And it really isn't when you're claiming uh, to be one thing and we can see example after example that you're doing just the opposite of what you say you are. So this is something we're hoping at Christmas time and hopefully New Year, uh, the American people and the, and the publics of these different countries have to put some political pressure on their own legislatures to morally stand up and do something about this. It's a horrible precedent it's, that's being set right now, what's happening in Yemen. I want to thank you for uh, joining us out of Atlanta, Mr. Jim W. Dean, Managing Editor and Columnist at Veterans Today.